good afternoon to everybody. Uh, in my short talk, uh, I'm going to uh, introduce the Czech National Corpus, which is a long-term project. It actually started uh, in 1994, and its, its aim has been, from the very beginning, a continuous mapping of Czech by compiling uh, corpora of, of uh, many language varieties. We've started with uh, written language, or more exactly, uh, Printed language at the time, and uh, but but gradually we we added more and more modalities. Uh, the data collection is supplemented by the development of uh, intuitive user applications for people to, to work with with the data, and also uh, various uh, user services, which means uh, documentation, um, workshop organization, um, online help desk, etc. Uh, Czech National Corpus is a national research infrastructure uh, funded by the Czech Ministry of Education. Uh, it's also a, a no, a no, a no associated member of the Clarence CZ Consortium. And uh, currently we have uh, more than 8,000 registered active users who put uh, more than 3,800 user queries a day. Uh, a query is uh, here a uh, uh, meant to be uh, 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 as as a query we count we count uh, uh, no not, not only we can only request to to the uh, individual uh, user applications we don't count any for for the subsequent work with the with the query result and we obviously don't count uh, accessing a web or something like this so these are really queries put into one of our web applications. Uh, Czech National Corpus is also running a case center. Uh, its full name is Czech Clarin Knowledge Center for Corpus Linguistics. Um, our field of expertise is Corpus Linguistics, obviously, starting from the uh, Corpus compilation, which uh, means text preparation, data formats, annotation, and all this stuff. Um, then uh, Corpus querying, uh, methodology of corpus linguistics and um, using statistical methods and uh, the the um, most general aim is, is to promote uh, empirical research on the Czech language. So the services we provide are both uh, proactive and reactive. Uh, as I said, uh, there's a web, comprehensive web documentation and knowledge base and uh, uh, we share uh, the case center shares uh, Many other services with with the main uh, main CNC web. So there's online help desk, uh, technical assistance, consulting, and we also uh, do workshops on demand. Now uh, back to the Czech National Corpus. I said that uh, we uh, one of our aims is to, is to map the Czech language. Uh, this is done uh, by a compilation of corpora. Currently, there are three uh, main uh, series of Corpora that cover uh, printed check, uh, internet check, and spoken check. Uh, the printed check is the oldest one, and uh, it covers uh, a check printed production since 1990 until present, with the current size of 4.5 uh, billion uh, words. Uh, spoken check is, is newer. We started at uh, 20, uh, 22, 2002. And uh, it's obviously much smaller, 8.5 8 million words. But I should stress that um, the bulk of the spoken check here is uh, informal conversations between, between friends in a family or between uh, or on visits, et cetera. So it's, it's prototypical uh, informal spoken language. And the newest, uh, newest part is internet check. Uh, which is already we cover uh, the uh, from uh, we cover the range from 2017 until present. Current size is six uh, billion words. There are many other uh, corpora uh, we we also uh, have and we have compiled uh, diachrony corpora, learned corpora, and and many specialized ones. What could be of interest to to Clarin and, and foreign language users is the intercorp. It is a large uh, multilingual parallel corpus in, uh, in more than 40 languages. It's composed of uh, a manually aligned core, 
which is mostly fiction, and uh, various uh, collections, uh, collections uh, that have been aligned automatically. Its overall size is uh, almost two, two billion words in, in all the languages uh, counted together. We also host a corpora of other languages. So uh, many people, many of our users are uh, researchers uh, from, from abroad who access CNC to, um, to work with the corpora of, of their language. Uh, for instance, uh, we host a family of comparable web crawled corpora uh, called Arania. Currently, there are 14 languages, uh, mostly European ones. Uh, the average size of, of uh, one language is uh, one billion words. Um, we also host uh, early English books online, all Bailey corpus, uh, diachronic corpus of, of Italian, um, corpora of upper and lower Sorbian, and et, et cetera. So that's done not, not only, uh, there are no, not only a Czech corpora, but we also have a corpora of many, many other languages. Uh, now I'd like to give you an, an example uh, of, of three um, user interfaces that, that we have and that I think uh, could be uh, are the most, uh, again, most, uh, most interesting for the Clarion uh, community. The first one is Word at a Glance, which is currently the main uh, CNC word search service, which means that if a user uh, comes to our website and, and enters a word, uh, it, it will take you to the word at a glance uh, interface. Uh, it is a, uh, as, as, as the name suggests, uh, word at a glance creates a word profile that is aggregated from various resources and uh, presented in a structured and uh, in a structured way as a set of tiles. And the aim is to give an overview of the behavior of a word. It, uh, all. Uh, Everything is based entirely on corpus data, and there are uh, three main operation modes for this. Uh, you can either search for a single word, you can also uh, do a word comparison, and uh, there's also translation mode, which shows uh, the, most, um, uh, the, the most popular translations of the search word in, in, uh, in the language. The interface is designed to be very straightforward and easy to use, also for the general public, so it's easy to understand. And uh, for the administrator, it is flexible and configurable and easily re reusable, which means that uh, the, the set of tiles, as it is predefined, can be easy, easily uh, redefined uh, uh, another way. And uh, the, um, the resources, uh, uh, the sources can be can be uh, switched quite uh, quite uh, quite easily. And the, uh, the word at a glance is developed openly at GitHub, and it is also designed to be uh, deployed uh, by other projects. Uh, now, um, this is an example of how it looks like. Uh, this is a part of a single. Uh, this uh, this screen is a part of the results of uh, when you search for strong, which is a Czech word uh, meaning uh, tree. There are only four tiles on, on the screen now. In the upper left corner, you can see the most uh, prominent collocations. There are 10 of them. Uh, next to them are the text collocation examples where every collocation has its, its own uh, example. Then there is a frequency development uh, over time uh, based on our, uh, our written corpora. And in, in, the, in the lower right corner, you can see the similarly used words, uh, uh, which is, and this in information is based on the on comparison of word embeddings. So uh, these words have the word words embeddings most similar to to, to strong. Uh, the second application is context, already mentioned uh, by uh, Martin and, and Jan. It is a uh, web-based uh, general purpose uh, corpus concordancer. We've been developing uh, for six years now uh, on GitHub continuously. Uh, it supports, uh, supports monolingual corpora, plural corpora, and, and spoken corpora, which is very important for us because we, we need to have all of these covered by a single interface. And 
apart from Lindat, it is also deployed by other, other clearing centers, as far as I know, by clearing in Poland and Slovenia. And there are many features of context, but uh, these five I consider the most, uh, the most important. So there's a query language editor uh, in, in an advanced mode with syntax highlighting. There is a tag builder widget that lets you uh, select interactively the morphological category. So you don't have to know the, the exact tag set. You just click on the part of speech, click the, the, the required case, uh, et cetera, and uh, the, the builder builds the, the, the query for you. There, uh, it, there's an interactive creation of subcorpora that lets you zoom into the selected part of the corpus and uh, even down to the document level if, if you if you are uh, if you if you zoom uh, uh, very tightly so uh, for instance if you are interested in in a subcorpus composed of only fiction published in 1990s uh, with female authors and translated from german you can easily zoom into all these parts of the subcorpus of the given corpus and uh, the, the the widget will will show you say five documents that are included in the corpus and that meet these these criteria this is important this is very important because we always uh, stress to our students that they, they should know their corpus and before starting starting to work with the data they should know uh, what's what's inside uh, context features also breadcrumb navigation that's uh, even as an editable processing chain. So, for instance, when you search for a word, you get concordances, then do a frequency analysis and collocation analysis, and all these uh, uh, operations uh, form a chain that can be edited and uh, rerun uh, from the very beginning with some slight alternation of, of parameters. Uh, context also uh, lets you uh, display the, the dependency syntax trees. Uh, this collage shows uh, very briefly uh, some of the features. So on, in the upper right corner, uh, there, there is the syntax tree. In the lower right corner, there's a two uh, dimensional frequency distribution showing the, the distribution of, of, of lemmas across the various text types. Um, and in the upper left corner, uh, there are uh, there's a, an example of manual classification of uh, of concordance lines. Where, you, for instance, if you want, for instance, to to uh, classify the uh, um, the individual meanings of, of of the given search word. Now, finally, uh, the last application is Calc. Uh, it is a statistical statistical calculator. Uh, that supports um, uh, research problems that we have identified as, as the ones that are most commonly uh, encountered in corpus research. It is task-based, task which means that uh, appropriate tests are already pre-selected. So you don't have to worry whether, whether uh, say, a chi-squared test is appropriate for this task. You just, you just find the task and <clears throat> use uh, whatever a calc uh, offers to you. Uh, the examples of the currently supported tasks are, are here. Uh, the, word, the word frequencies can be compared uh, because they are viewed uh, in, as, a, as a point estimates of, of, of the, the real frequency of the word. Uh, uh, there's establishing the reliability of a random sample. And uh, finally, the evaluation of results based on a group of features, which are uh, shown here on the last slide. So let's say that you uh, did some classification of a, of a concordance line. You've identified, uh, there is a, uh, sorry, uh, you search for, a, search for a word, uh, the, con the concordance is very large, and then you uh, want to make a sample that's uh, size of 100, 100 concordances, then uh, you identify five different uh, senses of the given word. Uh, the sense one is frequency 23, the sense two, frequency 17, sense three, uh, 54, uh, sense four, uh, four occurrences and, and two occurrences of the last sense. And uh, then uh, the, um, the, the identified frequencies are uh, displayed with, in, in confidence intervals that give you uh, an estimate of, of uh, what um, 
uh, of, of uh, the real frequencies in a sense that if you repeat it, uh, the experiments once again and once again, then uh, the, the actual frequencies that you will get will be very much likely uh, within these, these confidence uh, intervals. Um, yeah, so that's it. That's all from, from me and uh, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.